Good morning and welcome to Power for Today. This is George Dello, and I wanted to come on and share some things with you today concerning the uh, some of the misconceptions about holiness. And uh, and um, I'm going to be having a guest with me today. Uh, uh, we had once before Warren Larkin. We're going to talk about some of these issues concerning uh, one of the misconceptions of uh, why. Why holiness now? Why is it so necessary that we have it now? Uh, because this is so key to um, so key to uh, much of what's going on in the church today. And so we need to let me get connected here. All right. Bring it up, Warren, and uh, let's see. And pull him up. There we go. Amen. Well, good morning, brother. Uh, how are things in California? Oh, beautiful, 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 my friend. How about back where you're at? You're at the other part of the country. Yeah, we're having. Having some decent weather today and yesterday, so I was able to mow the lawn. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> yeah, now, George, do you know if I'm supposed to rotate this phone? I'm just, this is my second time doing this. Uh, I've got mine sideways. Let me let me just see how it works. No, that's no good. That's okay, good. all right. All right. That, that's good right there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, doing great. Excited for this. Thank you. Thank you so much, George, for the for the invite to come on to your uh, your uh, Facebook page. I'm, I'm just, I'm very, very happy and honored. Thank you so much. Amen, amen. Well, uh, again, I want to just welcome everybody on Facebook Live. And uh, this is George Dallow, Power for Today Prophetic Ministries with Warren Larkin out in California. And uh, we're just going to discuss some of the, some, some of the misconceptions about holiness in the church today. And in particular, I want to hold in, hone in on this issue about uh, holiness now, uh, because I, I look at comments and, and hear people talking, and so many people have this idea that uh, we can't be holy in this life, that uh, everything has to be, holiness has to do when we die or when Jesus comes, and, and he's going to suddenly make us holy. But uh, that's not scriptural, and we want to show you through the Bible that, that this is essential for now because there's reasons, uh, the, the very reasons for holiness. And uh, uh, we're gonna get into that just a moment. Let's just take a moment first and, and go to the Lord in prayer and ask God to uh, uh, to teach us and guide us and uh, open up the word to understand. So Father, we just wanna thank you for this opportunity again as we come together to uh, minister your word, Father God, and to uh, really look into the these uh, doctrines that you've given us, Father God, they're so essential to our walk with you and, and to a, having a glorious church upon this earth that's going to reveal you and, and make you known to the multitude. So, Father, we just want to pray, Holy Spirit, just come and, and lead us and guide us with all the truth. Just break open the bread of the word. Open our eyes, the eyes of understanding to see, to receive, that that word can work effectively in us as you are building a church, that you're stirring people to, to have a glorious church on this earth, to bring in the weeks of harvest before the coming of Jesus Christ. So, Lord God, we just thank you that you orchestrate all things according to your will and purpose in the mighty name of jesus amen and amen pray amen. Uh, let, let's look at this because why holiness is so so essential uh for now uh because well number one without holiness nobody shall see the lord and uh if you really study that out uh, there's a reason for that because one of the big essentials is because sin is destructive Sin is, is everything evil in this earth. Everything that's wrong in this earth is rooted in sin. But uh, just, just a couple of scriptures we get going here to, to show you that holiness is for now, and it's essential for now. Now, again, in, in Luke chapter 1, when uh, John the Baptist was born and Zechariah began to prophesy uh, about what was going on with the birth of John the Baptist, and he was showing us that this was the fulfillment of God's promise to Abraham. But he said this in uh, uh, Luke chapter 1 and uh, verse 
uh, 73, he says, the oath which he swore to our father Abraham to grant us that we, being delivered from the hand of our enemies, might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. What are you saying? We are called to serve God now in this life during the days of our life. In other words, we need to be holy all the days of our life in a relationship with God. And, 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 and uh, uh, in Hebrews chapter 9, and I'm going to read this from the Amplified Bible in verse uh, uh, 27 and 28, he says, Just as it is appointed for all men once to die, and after them for certain judgment, Sorry about that, popping up on me. He says, even so it is that Christ, having been offered to take upon himself and bear as a burden the sins of many, once and for all, will appear a second time, not to carry any burden of sin nor to deal with sin, but to bring to full salvation those who are eagerly, constantly, and patiently waiting for and expecting him. So, so Jesus makes it plain, that uh, Hebrews makes it plain, Jesus isn't coming back to deal with sin. He's already dealt with sin. He's already paid the price of sin so that we can be sanctified and be made holy. In fact, when you read about Israel in the Old Testament, they were commanded to be holy then. The only difference is that their holiness was based on following the law. But the purpose of the holiness was so that God could dwell with them, that, that the presence and power of God could be with them uh, during their, uh, uh, you know, all the days that they were God's people. So that's one of the main reasons why we have to have holding this now, because it is integral to God's presence and power being literally with us as he was with Israel. When they weren't holy, God left. So we need to understand that. And, uh, and so it is with us today in 1 Peter chapter 1, uh, verse uh, 14 and 16, You'll, you'll notice there that we are commanded to be holy, meaning we're to be commanded to be holy right now because, uh, again, if we want the presence and power of God in our life, we want that intimacy with God whereby uh, we can we can reveal his glory upon this earth. In uh, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 14 and 15, it says, As obedient children, not to Forming yourselves to the former lust as in your ignorance. Again, talking about this is a practical holiness. But as he, as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in all your conduct. So what is he saying? You need to be holy now in your conduct. Now when you get to heaven, we, we, we need the holiness now. Because again, we need to reveal Christ rightly upon this earth so people can get saved. So he says, because it is written, be holy, for I am holy. And that goes right back to what I was saying. Uh, it has to do with relationship because God is holy. If we want to walk in agreement with God, if we want to walk with God, we must be holy also because there's no agreement between God and sin or idolatry or, or, or uh, a darkness or unrighteousness. The only agreement we have with God is through holiness. And so this is why Jesus came to make us holy and that we need it now in order to carry out God's will and purpose and to rightly reveal God upon this earth. And, and one of the big keys of this has to do it all with, with, with love. Uh, and uh, Warren uh, talks a lot about that, uh, uh, why we, uh, we need holiness now, because it has to do with love and everything. Yeah, in, in the scriptures, the Bible talks about that, that in Acts chapter 2, that the love of God was shed abroad in their heart by the Holy Ghost. And it's something that's integral. In the Bible, it says that, that the first and great commandment is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, all your strength. And then the big thing that, that George and I are trying to, to encourage you to is it's, it's not something that you can, quote, lather up. You can't just decide, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to really set my mind to it, and I'm going to, boy, I'm going to love God. It's something that came on the day of Pentecost. It's something that was prophesied in the book of Ezekiel. He said, in that day, I will take away your heart of stone and I will give you a new heart and I will cause you to walk in my statutes. It's a gift of God that he wanted to do that, to be able to, to obey the first and great commandment, to walk in the reality of 1 Corinthians 13. It says, though I speak with the tongues of men and angels and have not agape, 
the love of God. It says it profits me nothing. And it gives you the, the things that if you had agape, these are the things that, that, that you would walk in, the reality. I want to use that word, the reality. And back then again, you can't try to do it. You can't just set your mind to it and just say, okay, boy, I'm just going to really set my mind. It, you can't. It's a command. It's a command that God gives you, but yet he supplies the grace and the ability to change your heart to be able to walk in that reality. And like I said, George is saying, it's not something that just, you know, that sounds kind of good. That's, you know, that's a good little option, that, that, that holiness thing. Yeah, I might, no, it's, it's critical in your life in salvation. In salvation, if you want to be saved, even in a, in a different a context too, George, I was thinking about the other, the other day too. The Bible says, if your righteousness does not exceed the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees, you're not going to enter the kingdom of heaven. Well, now, Amen. how could your righteousness exceed the righteousness? Is it righteousness, righteousness? No, the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees was a righteousness that was just... The, the only power that they had, what they looked to was the blood of bulls and goats to be able to cover their sin, to be able to, to cover. There was just an imputed righteousness. But in the New Testament, what we're looking about, if you read in Romans uh, chapter three and four, you see that, that there was a righteousness God would, would, would give us. The Bible says those that hunger and thirst after righteousness, which is the same thing. It's the love of God shed abroad in your heart by the Holy Ghost. There's many different ways that the, that the Word of God will talk about this blessed thing that we're to receive by faith. It's, it's sanctification. It's holiness. It's the love of God shed abroad in your heart by the Holy Ghost. It's their heart made perfect by, by God. You know, it's like when you look back in again about Jesus. When John the Baptist looked up and he saw, he saw Jesus, he said, Behold, the Lamb of God, who does what? He takes away the sin of the world. His name shall be called Jesus, for he shall save his people, not in his sin, but from your sin. You know, the idea, the thing is, when this happens, it's, it's just amazing. It's amazing what happens when you see that what happened to the disciples on the day of Pentecost. Before Pentecost, it said they were all behind uh, closed doors for fear of the Jews. The love of God had not been shed abroad in their heart by the Holy Ghost. You read in the book of, 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 of 1 John, and it said there is no fear in, in, in love. Perfect love. That's agape love. Cast out all fear. So I'm saying it's it's a many, many, many faceted, uh, wonderful things when you walk in the reality. And the big thing that George and I want to encourage you is you can't grow into holiness. You can't just, okay, okay, I'm going to grow into it. It doesn't happen. It has to be received by faith. The Bible says those that hunger and thirst after what? After righteousness will be filled. If you've got a hunger in that, when you seek for me with your whole heart, you would find me. So it's something that God implants. It's a promise of God. The Bible in another place says said that the word of God, the word of God, it says did not profit them. Why? Because it wasn't mixed with faith. You can understand holiness. You can understand. You can, it's beautiful. I like that. When Jesus said, be what? Perfect. Jesus said it. He said, be perfect for my father in heaven is perfect. And people, and you see churches that are almost bragging because well, there's no perfect people in our church. Well, be like the Bereans. Look what Jesus said. Jesus said that, uh, be ye perfect as my Father in heaven is perfect. Then another place he says, if you deny me and my words, me and my words, it wasn't a good thing. It wasn't a compliment. So what we're trying to do is, is, is by the grace of God, encourage you to see that you can walk in the reality of the love of God shed abroad in your heart, of being delivered from Romans chapter seven, where Romans chapter seven says the things that I want to do. I want to love my wife. I want to be patient with my wife. I don't want to get irritated when I drive down the road. All those things that you want to do, it says, I can't do them. It says, but it's not, not me that does it in Romans chapter seven. It says it's sin that dwells in me. So when that's the thing, when the love of God is shed in your heart, God changes your heart. Like, like Acts chapter 2 was the fulfillment of Ezekiel. In that day, I will take away your heart of stone, and I will give you a brand new heart. Why? And I will cause you, cause you to walk in my statutes. The Bible mm -hmm. says the commandments of the Lord are not grievous. They're not burdensome if you've received a new heart, if you've received the reality. But it ain't going to happen unless you appropriate it. Unless you hunger and thirst for the reality of righteousness, you, it wasn't going to happen. 
So what our encouragement to you, and especially when we read the comments, is to see comments where, where, where you say, Brother George, Brother Warren, I see it. I see it's a, it's a blessing that God wants to give me. We're praying for it. I'm praying, pray for us. Pray for me that I might be able to, to have my heart circumcised. That's another thing that the Bible talks about, that your heart would be circumcised instantaneously. The cleansing would come instantaneously, not a growth process, not something that, oh, today I'm a little bit more holy than yesterday, and I just continue. It doesn't happen. In Acts chapter 2, it happened like a light switch. All of the types and shadows are the same thing. The crossing of the River Jordan was a light switch. Being circumcised was a light switch. It wasn't going to be something that you'd have your little boy circumcised, circumcised for the next six months. That would be abuse. That would be child abuse. But God says he wants to do that to you instantaneously. Is all you need to do is have the faith, believe the, believe God. That he says, I want to do that. I want to do that. It's my, my good pleasure, he says, to give you the kingdom. And he says, the kingdom of God is not food and drink, but it's righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. And it's by God. It's something that when you walk in the reality, you can't pat yourself on your back and say, boy, I gave up this and I gave up that and I did. No, all the glory goes to God because he does it by the power of his grace, the new dispensation of grace. We're not under the law. The Bible says in Hebrews that the blood of bulls and goats could not take away our sin, but praise God for the blood of Jesus. That's why when you look at the Bible and you look at Paul and he says, he said the only thing he would do, he longed to do was preach Christ crucified. You think, well, why would he do that? Because everything is the foundation of walking in the reality of what that crucifixion has the power and the ability to do to you. It has the power, if you appropriate the faith, that it would cleanse your heart. Everything in the New Testament revolves around you receiving what happened because of the blood of Jesus that would cleanse you from all sin. So it's an incredible thing. We just pray that God takes away the blinders. In another place too, George, it's interesting because the Bible talks about those that are persecuted for righteousness sake. I would think, well, why would anybody be persecuted? I mean, I, I know it. you go preaching what we're talking about and people are not real excited about, about seeing it. And you think, well, what, why would they do it? Jesus said, be perfect. All the scriptures about it, but their eyes get blinded. And then too, it says, if you're blessed, are you when you're persecuted for righteousness sake? Why would that be? Because like it said before, in that other scripture, if your righteousness does not exceed the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees, you're not going to inherit the kingdom of heaven. So the enemy would like to do everything to, for, in the world to do to keep you under really the righteousness that was in the Old Testament. It was just a covering. Read Romans chapter four. It was just a covering. That's all it did. That they had to go every year, every year to the to the temple and offer their sacrifices. And all it could do was cover. The blood of Jesus doesn't just cover. It cleanses. It eradicates. Romans chapter 7 is gone. You're freed from that. You're entered into the reality, Romans chapter 8. So get me all excited here, George. But, no. but yeah, it's something that we want to see you excited, believing God, believing God for it. Amen. And let, me, let me just make a couple comments on this. That, um, when we talk about the righteous exceeding the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, if you read uh, the, uh, the, the Sermon on the Mount and you read Matthew 23, he, mean, he explains what he means by that. And what he's talking about is Jesus took the standard. He didn't lower the standard. He raised the standard. He, Jesus said, if you have lust in your heart, you're an adulterer and, and, and you're not going to get in the kingdom of heaven if you have anger in your heart you're the same as a murderer it's what's in your heart and that's what sanctification is all about it's the purifying of your heart from all these attitudes and and sin that it, it, it's where the sin is rooted in us and that's why it says if you clean the inside of the cup the outside will be clean also so uh and going to back again to why holiness now because there's only two a commander we, there's two commandments we have to fulfill the love of the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and all your strength. You love your neighbors yourself. And, and that's impossible in the natural. That's impossible because we don't have that love in us. And, and again, the only way to have that love is through the sanctifying work. As Warren said, you've got to have your heart circumcised. If you go back to Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 6, he tells us 
This, this was a prophecy of what God was going to do. So he says, and the Lord your God will circumcise your heart and the heart of your descendants to love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul that you may live. Again, it's, it's, it's the integral part of uh, God's saving work so that we can fulfill all of the commandments. Every commandment of the Bible is fulfilled in those two commandments, loving God and loving our neighbor. But the only way that is possible is for God to do what he prophesied to do. And this is the Colossians chapter two, this Jesus came to do. Jesus circumcises the heart. He's the one by, by the Holy Spirit comes and cuts out the stony heart of flesh and gives you a brand new heart. And Holy Spirit, when he comes, he pours the agape. He pours that love of Christ into our heart to empower us, to enable us to do exactly what God calls us to do. To love him with all our heart, soul, and strength and love our neighbors as ourselves. You can only do it with the agape, the unconditional love of God. Because your love is selfish. Your love wants to be worshipped and served. Your love is rooted in lust. It's rooted in you. See, God has to get you out and bring us into Christ, bringing us in that place where his love is manifested through us so we can fulfill the commandments of God and we can reveal him correctly uh, and rightly represent him here on this earth, again, to reach souls. Because the one thing everybody in creation wants more than anything else is to be loved. That's it. That's the bottom line. <laughs> Amen. So if we're walking in that love, we're not showing them a good news, the good news of the gospel. Jesus came to do this work so that we can manifest his love to those around us, and they're going to want it. Amen. Just like Amen. everybody. Amen. Yeah, and another scripture, too. Jesus said, he said, if you love me, you'll do what? You just say, well, I love him. I'll just try her. No, it says, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. And the commandments of the Lord, they're not grievous if your heart's been circumcised, if your heart's been purified. In Matthew, it says, it says, not everyone that says, and this is important, because like I said, this is not just something that's optional. This is not just, well, that sounds like a good thing, Warren. No, it says, not everybody that says, Lord, Lord, because in Romans chapter, chapter not, uh, 10, 9, and 10, it says, if thou shalt confess Jesus Christ as what? Lord in your life, and believe in your heart that God hath raised him from the dead, you'll be saved. But in another place, Jesus said, well, why do you call me Lord and don't do the things that I say? But here in Matthew, it says, not everybody that says, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom. He says, for, for a lot of people, many, that means the majority of the people are going to come to him in that day and say, well, wait a second, we passed out demons. We healed the sick. I was on the praise and worship team. I was on prayer. I did all these great things. What's he going to say? Key, key, key word, depart from me. What? You workers of iniquity. I didn't know you. It's a solemn warning. And it's a sign. There's places in Revelation and places in Corinthians where it gives all the things that if you practice, if you live in this reality, you're not going to go to heaven. The warnings. You know, God's not. I mean, I know. I, I, I've known of people that that are that are living. You know, maybe living with somebody in, uh, uh, together, and they're not married, and they they get this idea that that God's just a. He's a. He's a sensitive God. He's a. He'll he'll understand my situation. He's a righteous God. If he says this is the word of God, that's the word of God. That's it. Mm -hmm. You've got to adjust your life to what he says in his word. Don't feel because you're sin, he's going to understand it because you're living uh, with somebody and, and you're not married to them. And, and it's because of a financial situation or whatever. It isn't going to work. And that's what he says. There's going to be many that are going to come to him and they're going to have all these great things. Well, wait a second. I spoke in tongues. I did this. Like it says in, in, in Corinthians, though I speak with the tongues of men and angels, though I have faith that I could remove mountains and all these wonderful things and have not agape, I have not the love, love of God shed abroad in my heart by the Holy Ghost, by faith, it profits me nothing. No. It's, it's not, it's a serious place to think about church. And like I said, that's what George and I want to see. We would love to, see, we love your comments. But we would love to see the comments where all of a sudden the lights go on because it had to do that to me. I fought this thing. I didn't receive it. The only reason that I received it is because God opened up me to show that all the revivals, that was the foundation. I didn't see it. All of a sudden, I would just start seeing that they would talk about that they were sanctified, that they were made holy. And, and like I said in one of the other videos that I was 
invited to do with George. I thought that they just lived in a higher state of standard, that they were just, you know, they, the men would wear long sleeve shirts or whatever, but they were talking about something in their heart and I fought it. I fought it for a long time, but it forced me to read the word of God. It forced me to pray and say, God, open my eyes. If this is a reality that the blood of Jesus truly has power to do that, open my eyes to see that, that I can walk in that reality. But the problem is in so many ways, it's almost like we preached another, we have the Bible, we've got the Bible, yeah. But it's almost like we preached another gospel, another Jesus, and another spirit. Oh, I believe above all things that he wiz, wishes that we prosper and be in health. But what about the what about the scriptures of the blood of Jesus would cleanse you from all sin? Oh, wait, we don't really like that one. What about the scriptures where Jesus says, be perfect for my father is heaven perfect. He said that. Oh, we don't like that one because it's, it's impossible to be perfect. It's like people have just taken, and it's not a good thing when you read what they talk about, the people that preach another gospel. It says, let them be accursed. It wasn't anything that was a good thing. So you got to make sure, be like the Bereans. And what George and I are sharing with you, see it, understand, pray over it. Because there's violent, massive, demonic uh, oppression, spirit, whatever you want to call it, against this message. Because the enemy, he's had a grip on society ever since the fall. And after when Jesus came, that was going to be the answer to it. But he still had this grip on it to keep people from entering into the reality of the promise of God, the reality of the love of God shed abroad in your heart by the Holy Ghost, the reality of your heart being circumcised, the reality of you being made perfect as your Father in heaven is perfect, the reality of all these wonderful things. He's a mighty God. He said, I will do exceedingly abundantly below what you ask or think. No, above what you ask or think. Raise your standard higher into what God says about the reality that God would get the glory, that he would get the, it's all about him, that the lamb that was slain would receive the reward of his suffering in you, church, in you, that you would see it, that you would understand and that you would that you would press in by faith. Anyway, thank you, George. Amen. Amen. And, and let's make this clear too. We're, we're not talking about what we do. We're talking about what God does. Amen. This is all grace and, 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 and uh, faith. Because again, we can't do it. We can't sanctify ourselves. We can't make ourselves holy. God has to do it. And the result is, is these works being manifest. The result of the sanctification is a changed heart and a new life where we walk in this newness of life. And, and again, in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14, where he tells us to, uh, without holiness, no one shall see God. What does he tell us? Pursue holiness. We have to make up our hearts and minds. This is God's truth. We need to pursue it. We have to go after it. And how do we get into that? Well, he tells us in John chapter 8, he says in, in John 8, 30, uh, 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 34, most assuredly I say to you, whoever, whoever commits sin is a slave of sin. He says, and a slave does not abide in the house forever. If you're enslaved to sin, you're not going to get into the kingdom of God. He says, but a son abides forever. Who are the sons of God? Those that are born again. Those who are led by the Spirit of God. So he says, therefore, if the Son makes you free, you shall be free indeed. Free from what? Free from sin. Free from the power of sin. Free from Satan. Free from the kingdom of darkness. Free from this world. You will be set free. How? By washing the sin out of your heart. How do you get to that place? How does the Son set you free? He sets you free by the truth. It's the truth. He sanctifies us by his truth. John chapter 17. He says in, in Roman, or John chapter 8, verse 32 or 31, if you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth will set you free. You see, we have to get into the word of God to get the revelation of the truth that sets us free. When the Holy Spirit opens the eyes of your understanding, when that word becomes flesh in you, when that light bulb goes on, faith is produced. That revelation comes and produces faith, and faith releases the power of God to instantaneously sanctify you, make you into this new creation so that you become uh, uh, washed, sa just, uh, washed, sanctified, and justified in the name of Jesus, by the Spirit of God. And it's a now work. Let me just read you in, in uh, Romans chapter 6, verse 22 and 23, because Paul declares this work is right now. 
Notice what Paul says. He says, but now, but now. What does the mean word now mean? What does it mean? It means right now. It's done. It's finished. But now, having been set free from sin, over, done, something took place a moment in time. There was an event whereby Paul was totally delivered from sin, made free from sin, but now it is done, having been set free, okay? And having become slaves of God, you know, in other words, he brings us out of the kingdom of darkness, he brings us into the kingdom of light. He delivers us from the power of Satan, he brings us unto the power of God. Amen, that's what he's talking about. So you're set free from sin, when? Now, right now, when you believe, when your faith comes to take hold of the promise, you are set free, you are made the safe slave of God, and he says, you have your fruit to holiness. What's he saying? This is the definition of holiness. Being dead to sin and alive to God. That's what holiness is. And notice what he says. You have your fruit to holiness and the end, eternal life. Eternal life is the fruit of holiness. It is the fruit of being dead to sin and alive to God. Why is that? Well, he tells you exactly why this is necessary. For the wages of sin is death. The wages of sin is death. No matter, I don't care what you say with your mouth, the wages of sin is death. If you're living in sin, the wages of sin is death. It is an immutable law of God. It's never changed. It's true today. It was true yesterday, 2,000 years ago. It's true today. It's true forever. It's an immutable law of God. The wages of sin is death. Your sin will produce eternal death. And on the other hand, the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. What is the gift of God? To wash you, to sanctify you, to justify you, to fully redeem you from all sin, to purify your heart, give you clean hands and a pure heart, so that what? You can enter into the hill of the Lord. You can go up into the mountain of God and stand in God's presence because of the blood of Jesus washing you, cleansing you, purifying you, and bringing you into this new life so that you can live and walk it out by loving God and loving your neighbor, so that others will come to know Jesus Christ. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and even, even scriptures back to righteousness. The Bible says that, that if righteousness came by works or by the law, you know, by your ability, then Christ died in vain. Then everything that he went through, the blood of Jesus, it had, it had nothing to do with you and your life because you haven't appropriated. You're still trying to go back to the Old Testament and trying to do it yourself. And if you could do it, like I said before, if you could do it yourself, you could, <clears throat> you could, you could give yourself lots of glory. Oh, brother George, brother Warren, you know, I really set my mind to it. I just decided I'm going to be holy, you mm -hmm. know. And you might, you might be able to bear fruit in one or two little areas. Maybe you, maybe you put away smoking. Praise God that you did that. But the Bible says that you know them by their fruit, not just one little character, not just one little thing that you that you change, but everything. I mean, read Roman, read First Corinthians 13, that the love of God shed abroad in your heart, you know, the peace, the joy, the long suffering, gentleness, meekness, faith, you know, the works of the flesh versus the works of the spirit, you know, to walk in that reality, the beauty of that reality. This is not, like I said before, this is not something, be ye holy, for I am holy, you know, this is not like a legalistic, I mean, in some ways that God commands you, but he gives you the grace and the power to change it. You know, this is not something when you entered into it, it's a struggle. And the other thing to go back, back to and to tie in another thing too that 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 like for me that the part that really opened my eyes if you're if you really have studied revivals and studied the the healing evangelist and things which i did for years and years and years and prayed and prayed and prayed you will see that that was a key in their life like i said i fought it i mean if you look at smith wigglesworth john g lake with the healing worm smith wigglesworth that raised 21 people from the dead you read about him the amazing power duncan campbell with the Haberdies revival oswald chambers and his utmost for his highest and he was a holy william seymour in azusa street why why the bible says that that the fervent effectual prayer of what of a righteous man avail us much well i'm right well maybe you're still in the old testament righteousness of the scribes and the pharisees if your heart is not made perfect if your heart is if, if you haven't received the righteousness of god like in romans chapter chapter three you're still praying under the righteousness which was of the of the scribes and the pharisees the, the righteousness was just of a covering so you walk in to see the reality why was it that god poured out his spirit and power with all these people with these revivalists 
because they entered into a place. He said, the arm of the Lord is not short that it cannot uh, heal, nor is his ear dull that he cannot he uh, heal, hear you. But he says, but your sins have separated you from me. There's something about it, many other scriptures that George could share too, that talk about the reality of this, that when you walk in the reality of holiness, God can impart the power of God to you. He can impart. The old timers used to say that God is not going to cleanse a dirty vessel with his power. He's first got to sanctify you before he can fill you with his power. So it's critical. If you're playing for revival, you can be in meetings like at, like at the, uh, the, the college, but they had wonderful meetings. The spirit of God poured out in a wonderful way, and it was great. But I don't think that sanctification, and that was a part of it, because it rucks into a whole new powerful realm. So anyway, thank you, George. Amen. Amen. You know, and and, and again, I, I would challenge you if you if you don't believe this sanctification is for now, if you would do a word search in the New Testament on just this idea of once were. What does it mean for somebody to be once were? It means they were at one time, but no longer. If they once were, they no longer are now. And I can give you some scriptures. You can go read them for yourself and check it out. First Corinthians 6, 9 through 11. Paul talks about all these sinners, all these different uh, areas of sin. will not get into the kingdom of heaven. But then he closes it out by saying, and some of uh, uh, such were some of you. You used to be. Some were that way, but no longer. Romans 6, 17 and 18. You were slaves of sin, but no longer. You're, you're different now. Everything's changed now, okay? You were dead in sin, but no longer. God has raised you up into newness of life. You go on and on. You once were darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. You once were alienated in your mind by wicked work, yet now you've been reconciled. Now it's different, okay? You can go on and on. Just do a word search on that word were and see how God changed people in the New Testament from sin to righteousness, from light to darkness, from the kingdom of Satan to the kingdom of God. They once were, but no more. Why? Because of the blood of Jesus, what Jesus came to do. And again, one of the things Lord mentioned before that we really understand, it has to be an instantaneous work. It has to be. Why? Well, because he tells us in uh, uh, Jesus in Matthew chapter 15, verse 18, he tells us the problem with us, okay? He tells us those things which proceed out of the mouth come from the heart, and they defile a man. They defile you. What's he talking about? Out of the heart come evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornication, theft, false witness, blasphemies. And these are the things that defile a man. What is Jesus saying? The root source of everything having to do with sin is in your heart, in that spiritual nature of man. It's corrupted by sin. And as long as that sin's in you, it defiles you. It makes you unclean. It makes you profane. It makes you unholy. And it never gets better except you cut it all out at once. Why? Because Paul tells in Romans chapter 7, lawlessness leads to more lawlessness. He tells in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, a little leaven leavens the whole lump. He tells us in, in Ephesians 4 and Colossians 3 that uh, the old man grows more and more corrupt. You can't fix him. God didn't come to fix Adam. He came to kill Adam. He came to get Adam out of you and bring you into Christ. Amen. This is why sanctification has to be now. It yeah. has to be an event, a point in time where all of that is taken out of you in a single cut of his circumcising blade or a single washing of that blood of Jesus to purify from all sin and all righteousness. So now he can give you a brand new nation, a brand new uh, nature, the divine nature of God <laughs> in righteousness <laughs> and holiness. Yeah. And again, it all comes about when your faith, when your faith, when you get the promise, when that light goes on, the Holy Spirit opens up the word you're understanding, and your faith rises up to take hold of the promise, you are instantaneously changed into this newness of life. Amen. This is what it's all about. <laughs> Amen. Yeah, what we're talking about, this is the good news. You know, I mean, 
if you were still trying to do it under the under the old covenant, under the blood of bulls and goats, this wouldn't be the good news. This would be the, the news of Romans chapter seven. Well, Brother Warren, I keep trying. I keep trying. I really keep trying. I'm trying. I'm going to really try. I'm going to set my mind to try to be holy. It isn't going to happen. And sometimes too, Brother George, uh, sometimes I call them these are sacred cows. Sometimes the, the people want to hide under certain verses, which they take out of context. Like the verse where Paul said, I die daily. And people said, well, you know, you know, and one of the answers to one of the videos was like, well, I just die daily. That had nothing to do with sin nature. That had to do with other places in the Bible. It talks about when people were faced with, with persecution. Paul was faced with death, faced with death constantly all the time. And it was a term that they used when they faced persecution and death. They said, I die daily. It had nothing to do with holiness. It had nothing to do with sin nature. And another one, too, that people seem to go to where they talk about Paul, where he talks about perfection. And he says, I have not yet attained perfection. Well, look at that, Brother Warren. See, Paul, he never attained. That had nothing to do with the heart. You read the context, study the context, and it talked about a martyr's crown. It talked about a term that they would say to be perfect would be to be able to be a martyr for God. To be able to be a martyr, and because the Bible talks about other places, that it it was really a, a I don't know an esteemable thing if I could use a, a better word to God that if you could be if God would choose you to be a martyr, you know you look at the disciples how many of the disciples were martyred, so it had nothing to do with Paul saying he had not attained perfection in his heart. It had everything to do with he had not yet died, and he would love it if the fact is if he could die for the Lord, if he could die as a martyr. So I'm just saying there's a lot of verses, but there's a vast majority of them that talk about the reality of what we're talking about. But there'll be these a couple little sacred cows that people will say, well, well, what about this, Brother George? What about this, Brother Warren? Look at the totality and be like the Bereans. Read it in the context. Don't read it because you think, well, my pastor told me nobody could be free from sin. You know, it's like the Lord showed me the other day, you know, that, that, that your pastor or whoever, yeah, whoever can be 99% uh, true in a lot of things, but in a critical issue like this, be wrong. It's like the old saying, rat poisoning is 99% pure, but it's the 1% that kills you. So we just, and, and it's like people are honest, they're sincere, they believe that, you know, and I'd be in that same realm unless God opened my eyes, just like I said, by studying revivals that I would believe the same thing. It took long, long time for me, for God to peel through this blindness of me, to see that there was a reality that was possible, that he wanted to, that it was his good pleasure to give me that kingdom, what we're talking about. So what I'd encourage you to do in all of these things, please be like the Bereans. Look at the word in the context. Study it. Look at it. Don't just take a little sound bite. Well, look at this. You know, read the totality, Amen. you know, read the totality, be perfect. You know, the danger zone, like I said, in a lot of ways, we would not say that. But in a lot of ways, we are preaching another gospel. Oh, it's the same Bible, but another Jesus, another spirit, another God. And it's, it's in, you read the scriptures, it's not a safe place to be in Jesus' name. Amen. And, and, and just, to, just to put the, the, the icing on the cake. I mean, in, in Hebrews chapter 10, he makes this very plain to us. In uh, Hebrews 10, 10, he, he says, by that will, by the will of God, this was God's will. And if you look up what is God's will, your sanctification, to be holy. The will of God is your sanctification. He says, by that will, we have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. He came to do what? To take your sin away. And by, verse 14, for by one offering, he has perfected forever those who are being sanctified. In other words, it's, it's done by faith. <laughs> and, and, he, and, he, and he brings us all together in verse 22. He says, here's what you do. Let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled talking about the blood of Jesus sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Again, it's by faith. It's done. We just need to take it by faith, just like our salvation is done, but you got to have faith to receive it. 
You just don't have it in your head. You can't know about it. You have to receive it. You have to embrace it by faith through the grace of God. And that's what Jesus came to do. He came to give us this work. It's all the, it's the will of God. It's the perfect will of God. And what, what does he tell us in First John? If we pray anything according to the will of God, he does what? You're guaranteed to get your answer. You can take possession of what he promises because it's God's will. He stands behind his will to do it. He is faithful to perform his word. He cannot lie. In fact, when it comes to sanctification, just read 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23 through 25. He tells us Jesus came to do what? To sanctify your body, soul, and spirit. And he says, faithful is he who called you, who will do it. Who will also do it? That's the promise of God. He cannot lie. <laughs> he is faithful to do everything He promised to do. And he's faithful to do it if we will just consecrate ourselves, surrender ourselves, give ourselves to the work of God, and get in the Word, get in faith, get the faith, get the revelation that's going to bring the promise to pass in your life. Amen. Amen. And like like it said, the important parts is that you could believe in this and you could say, yeah, I believe in this and just wait for it to happen. The Bible says those that hunger and thirst after righteousness. It says if those that hunger and thirst, you could say after the love of God shed, after those that hunger and thirst after, after, after a holiness. It's all the same thing. Those that hunger and thirst after, that's your part. When you see the promises of God, it's just not going to happen. You've got to, you've got to receive it by faith. And if I can say another thing, too, it's by the grace of God. We're under this wonderful dispensation, you know, and a lot of times you see people, and that was me before, I would take a mental ascent about it. Yeah, I'm under the dispensation of grace, but I never appropriated the grace. The Bible says sin shall not have dominion over you because you're not under the law, the dispensation of the law, but you're under the dispensation of grace. You look at Strong's Concordance and it says grace is the is the favor of god the unmerited favor of god but it has the thing it says coupled with the divine power of the spirit of the living god upon the heart of man where's sin nature where did it enter into the heart so by the grace of god is something that that we need to we need to appropriate grace the same thing that you would appropriate a healing scripture you wouldn't just say father bless this person if they if they if they needed healing from cancer you would be specific. You would say, Father, in the name of Jesus, you said you would heal them from all diseases and you would apply the promises. It's the same thing with the grace of God. You need to appropriate the grace of God by faith. Say, Father, by the grace of God, by your unmerited favor, you said that I would be sanctified. You said that. You promised that, God. You said it was your good pleasure. Jesus died that I might be able to come into that reality. I received that by the grace of God and to believe it. Believe it's going to happen now. Believe it now. Not, well, God, maybe someday you'll do it. That's not faith. That's unbelief. The Bible says Amen. without faith, what? It's impossible to please God. Those that come to God must know that he is, and he's a rewarder of those that diligently seek you. Flood your heart and your mind with those scriptures and the scriptures of faith and walk and appropriate those. Like I said, when you seek for me with your whole heart, not a little tidbit, not a little doubt will do you, but when you seek for me with your whole heart, you will find me. And that's what it had to happen with, with me and George and thousands upon thousands of other people that walk in this reality. And just instant, incidentally, it doesn't mean that, that, that you'll never sin in your life. It just means that the propensity for sin is gone. You're no longer under Romans chapter 7. I want to I want to bless my wife and I want to be patient with her. But when I wasn't sanctified, that was hard to do. I don't want to get irritated when I drive down the road and somebody cuts in front of me. I didn't want to get irritated, but I got irritated because it was sin that dwelled within me. And back in again, the reality is back in Ezekiel in that day. This was a prophetic word about Acts chapter two. I will take away that stony heart and I will. Yeah give you a new heart and do what and cause you to walk in my statue cause you that you would be freed from that thing the good news the good news that why paul would preach christ crucified is because he understood the importance and the reality of the blood of jesus of what could what if we appropriated what that could bring about in jesus name <laughs>
Amen. Amen. Well, let me let me close with one last scripture. I'm going to have you pray for us, uh, Lauren. Uh, uh, in Matthew chapter 13, and uh, talking about the seed and the soul. You see, a lot of people hear the word, but not everybody is saved. A lot of people hear the word, but not everybody receives the benefits of that word. Because it has to do, again, with our part, our consecration, our willingness. And you'll notice what he says, that when the word is, is sown, sometimes it falls on stony ground where it, it has no entrance whatsoever. It's just in our head. We just hear it. We, we, we hear it with our minds, but it never gets into the heart. And the devil just comes and, and steals it right away. Then he talks about sometimes there's no root. That word doesn't go down and be rooted in us where it can bear fruit, where it can produce what God wants to, wants to come. And what happens is when tribulation and persecution arises, they just fall away. They stumble and fall away. And then sometimes he tells us that it, 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 it's, it's sown among thorns. We're still caught up in the lust of the flesh. We still have the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches. And it chokes the word so it never bears fruit. But notice what he says. He who receives the seed on good ground is he who hears the word and understands it. And indeed it bears fruit and produces some a hundredfold, some 60, some 30. How do you give an understanding of it? Take it right back to John chapter 8, verse 31. Get in the word. Meditate on the word. Study the word. Seek the word until the word becomes true and it sets you free. You have to get the revelation that only the Holy Spirit can produce. But he's only going to produce it as we get the word, the, the, the words of truth that sets us free. You have to know the truth. And you have the only way to do it is to buy, to live, to get in the word of God. Let the Holy Spirit give you the revelation. You have to study it by the spirit of God so that that, that word can produce, come into a heart of understanding. And, it, and that light goes on and it's going to bring that transformation of your life. He's going to get the sin out of you and he's going to, you'll be able to walk in newness of life. And uh, don't do it. <laughs> Everything you're looking for is all in this. I'm telling you, the joy, the peace, the, the, the goodness, the, 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 everything you could ever want is, is, is right here in this yeah. because it's all bound up in love, loving God, loving our, loving our neighbors, and, and having that love just filling, filling and flooding our being, our soul. Uh, it makes all the difference <laughs> in the world. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. So, and one other thing, too, George, what I'd like to encourage people is in the comment section, if all of a sudden when the lights have been gone on, you know, post the thing, say, Brother George Warren, pray, pray for me. I see it. I want to be sanctified. I want it. I want it. And we'll pray for you. We'll pray for you. You know, but and it, yeah, just leave comments and, 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 and share this video with other people, too. It's not something that you really see a lot. You really hardly see it at all, you know. But but as you can see by what we've shared, it, 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 it's, it's not just kind of a, an option. It's, it's critical. This is necessary that you receive this and you believe it and you pray for it and that you walk in the reality of holiness. Not the theology, not the doctrine, oh, I understand it, but we want to walk to the reality. We just don't want a mental assent that, yeah, that scripture is true, but we want to press into God where we can say, praise God, my heart is purified. Praise God, I'm, I'm walking in holiness. Praise God, I've been sanctified. Praise God that my heart's been circumcised. <laughs> Amen. 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 Well, we're running out of time, so we're, we're going to go ahead and, and close out. I'm going to ask you, Brother Ward to, to pray for us, and uh, and then we'll close it out for today. Amen. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Father, we just uh, we thank you for this opportunity, Father, to, to, to share this wonderful, precious word, Father, about, about your son, about Jesus, Father, about the incredible sacrifice and all that you paid, all that he prayed, all that he endured, Father, that we might walk in the reality of holiness. We thank you, Father, by the power of your spirit, by the grace of God, to open people's eyes, Father. Open, take down the blinders, Father. Mm -hmm. Father, people believe that Jesus is, is an impotent Savior. They wouldn't say that, but they do, Father. Open their eyes, Father, to see the reality of the power, Father, of your spirit, the power of this new covenant of grace, the reality of the, of the grace of God, Father, in, in this new dispensation, Father. So we just thank you, Father. And this isn't, this isn't about George getting a bunch of numbers on, 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 on YouTube or whatever, Father. This is about you and your kingdom. This is about you and your glory. 
So we thank you, Father. Take down the blinders, Father. Give people a hunger and thirst after the reality of holiness, after the reality of righteousness. Again, Father, that we might have fresh new testimonies, Lord, that we might see on the, on the comments. Brother George, Brother Warren, I've been praying for it, and praise God, I think it happened. I think God circumcised my heart, Father. I see a change. I see the fruit of the Spirit. So we just thank you, Father. We're doing our part, but we thank you that we can't do your part. Only you can do that. So open eyes, create hunger, Father, all for your kingdom and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Well, I just want to thank everybody for being with us on Facebook Live. All of these videos can be found on my Facebook page as well as my YouTube channel, which is just George Dello. I want to thank Brother Warren for being here with us today. It's uh, It's been good. Uh, sharing the word together and uh, just praying that God will uh, move upon hearts and minds and change lives and raise up his voice church in this hour. So uh, let me encourage everybody uh, Amen. <laughs> to this video and uh, keep looking up. Your redemption draws nigh. We're one day closer to coming Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So Amen. Uh, let's get and uh, let's get holy and let's uh, let God have his way with us so that uh, we'll be watching and waiting for the coming Lord Jesus Christ. I believe it's soon. All the signs are around us. So uh, God bless you. I appreciate you being with us. I pray you have a blessed day in the Lord. And uh, if you follow us on Facebook, every time we go live, you'll be notified so you can uh, join in with us and, and uh, share your comments so we can answer your questions. So God bless you. Thank you again, Warren. Have a blessed day. I'll talk to you later. Amen. Amen. Amen.